Welcome to another Kusa Talk Show. Today is June 24th, 2019. And in fact, I'm going to start five minutes later. So、uh, let me update that. Start in five minutes. Be right back.、Uh, Three ten. So let's say three ten. And、uh, some talk show、uh, on. Let's see what what is today's topic. Today's topic is a sundry things.、Uh, is about keyboard. Today on keyboard web dev. JavaScript and、uh, Act, etc. Okay, copy that and back to Chrome. Here is my Chrome, and let's put that there, so people know. And we're gonna get my Windows. This needs to be at the bottom. You see, this is a a a, a efficient technique. You move your mouse. Always just move your mouse to the bottom, and you'll get to a、uh, Firefox or Emacs. You know, no click. So anyway, I will be back in five minutes. Actually, give me yeah ten minutes. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to get. Get my drink ready.
Good morning. Good morning, Sean. I'm back. Welcome to the Sad Talk Show. And、uh, so Sean says, give us something to listen to while you prepare your beverage. Never mind. I'll just hum a tune. Anyone, anyone cares? I'm humming "Sixteen Tons" by Tennessee Ernie Ford. So what song is that? I didn't. I don't know what that song is. Uh, po- post the YouTube link. So I'm back, and、uh, let's begin. And Sean says off topic, but when you come back, so I'm wondering what kind of music you are into. Okay, that's a good question. I'm into two type of、uh, music. One is classical, and、uh, the other one is pop, of course. Well, classical and non-classical. Okay. So classical. Of the classical music, basically the only、uh, music of classical type I listen to is piano. Piano, some occasionally organ,、uh, organ music uh, or uh, harpsichord. So I love、uh, piano music. So of the classical music, almost the only type I listen to is piano. And among the piano music,、uh, my favorites are. Bach and the least. Now Bach is the、uh, what do you call classic、uh, Baroque era、uh, classical music, and least is the Romantic era classical music. So among classical, I only basically almost only listen to uh, uh, piano music,、uh, but I don't listen to. For example, I I don't like symphonies at all. I don't like symphonies. Well, there are a few pieces, you know,、uh, Chopin's Fantasy or something.、Uh, you know, basically, I don't listen to any symphonies. Okay, occasionally I listen to string quartet,、uh, string quartet, or、uh, piano and、uh, violin together.、Uh, what's that called? You know, or concerto. You know, so,、uh, yeah. So, but but basically, I don't like symphonies. But sometimes I listen to concertos,、uh, but mostly like ninety-five percent is piano. Now among the piano music, my favorite、uh, favorite are Bach and Liszt. Okay, now among Bach, my favorite are this. Uh, uh, if I can only pick one、uh, piece, that would be well-tempered clavier, Book One. Okay, Book One, Prelude and Fugues. So that's my favorite of Bach's music. Now my favorite of least of least is the、uh, these transcendental etudes,、uh, in particular number twelve. Okay. So and in Bach, in Bach's well-tempered clavier, my favorite are two pieces:、uh, Fugue number four in Book One and Fugue number eight in Book One. Oh my God, these are. These are,、um, you know, they say it's mathematical perfection, but it's not just that. It's just, you know, it's a it's steady beat. Every note is perfect、uh, to such a degree your brain cannot take it after you listen to, for a while. Like you play in the background, okay? For example, I play in the background. I've been, I'm, you know, coding or doing whatever, and and you just keep playing in the background, and suddenly when it reaches some passage. Passages, <laughs> it you know it throb your brain. Uh, so uh, Sean says, I love everything late romantic and Russian. So what is、uh, late romantic? Like what what example? Late romantic, like uh, 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 you know uh, you know what 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 some what are some examples of、uh, late romantic? Uh, and、uh, Ramenov, yes, I love that too. So Ramenov would be my sec second favorite to least,、uh, with respect to you know pe-、uh, the piano、uh, composers. So I've laid out you know all the you know. So there are two parts: classical and non-classical.、Uh, among classical, I almost listen only to piano. Among piano music, two favorite composers: Bach. And、uh, least, and among Bach's, my favorite、uh, album is Well Tempered Clavier, Book One and Two. There, there are two of them, Book One and Two. But my, you know, 
the bark wrote so many like uh, and so uh, as well at least and other people so so but you if you only can pick one that would be bark bark's well tempered clavier and fugue number four and number eight in book one they are mathematical perf perfection they drive you insane <laughs> but now least transcendental et etudes you know something you can also be said you know Bach's music you know those are uh, fugues and his music Bach you know it's a uh, perfection but it's cold and austere you know there's there's no emotion there's no like uh, I give you a pat in the back there's no hey cheer up like the fucking, you know, sloppy jazz, okay, <laughs> jazz, jazz, and whatever, you know, uh, 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 you know, uh, songs. So Bach's music is just pure, cold, austere. That's that's how I roll, okay. By the way, you know, you like rock and roll, you know, some people, you like rock and roll, you're fine. You know, go like rock and roll, go like jazz, look, go like whatever, go like rap. You know, black people's rap, and violence, and uh, uh, what today's social justice can would call misogyny, but they don't go, but they don't, you know, they deny, they, you know, because it's blacks, you know, that, that's another story of, of the social justice uh, era of today. But then, uh, uh, so what what am I saying? Yeah, so, uh, yeah, you know, the, you know, how you roll, you know, you like rock and roll, you like, you know, country music or whatever but so you know the so what i'm saying is not just me i mean i'm talk, i'm pointing out the cold you know coldness and austerity of box music the, the, that, like there's no emotion there's no, no nothing like that it's just simply uh, uh pure music um and but and and on the other hand least now the Liszt and Bach are entirely different because you know Liszt is romantic. Bach is the uh, what what you call the um, Baroque era, okay? But so Liszt is entirely different. However, you know as music goes, you know they say music touches your soul, and uh, but it it's not the same for everyone though because. The music I like, it touches my soul. It doesn't, it may not touch yours. You know, you, you, you play, you know, classical music. Most people, they don't, they don't feel a thing. They don't, they don't care. But then they care about their stuff, you know, some whatever music, uh, or, or heavy metal, you know, what the fuck, uh, you know, th that touches their soul, whatever. So, you know, so that's why, uh, it's different. Now, I was comparing Liszt uh, and Bach. Now, Liszt is also touches your soul, touches my soul, okay? But it's entirely different. Liszt is, uh, it's emotional, okay? Liszt music is uh, highly, because it's romantic, it's, you know, classified as romantic. Romantic music, uh, 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 emotion is the main thing. But however, Liszt music is also cold. There's no, you know, like Chopin. Chopin is like the modeling, you know, the soap opera. You know, oh, oh, sad, oh, sad, so sad, oh, so soothing. You know, this is nothing like that. Fuck that. You know, There's nothing like that in, in least uh, music. Okay, that's trans transcendental attitudes. You know, uh, and uh, and my favorite among uh, these uh, transcendental attitudes, there are twelve of them, is the number twelve. Number twelve is the name. You know, uh, you know, it's given a name as a. Uh, uh, plowing a uh, snowstorm sometimes um, so you know it's inescapable darkness and gloom each note is a knifing on your heart it repeats over and over with greater stent intensity and sternness forces of nature in execution sans mercy and in Chinese xiao feng bao yu ku hai fei ten yin fu ru dao 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 Kershing Fei Qing Fei Nian Leng Ku Si Zhong. So that's a, that's a little Chinese uh 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 what did the uh um uh verse Chinese verse I wrote to describe the song and which is similar to the English description here. Uh that's is that is this is transcendental attitudes number twelve, okay? 
let me post it here so maybe you can listen to uh, for uh, you know my my dear readers my dear you know followers and subscribers oh I have five people watching great good morning uh, so uh, so it says I love everything so the, here's a link to late romantic uh, from Sean so let's see who they are so I digressed you know today I had other topics but you know today's uh, you know we're gonna talk about random so romantic era 1815 to 1910 yeah after that is modern modern whatever fuck <laughs> and now they are postmodern era <laughs> fuck and fucker fucking fucking fuckist you know oh yeah so I, I forgot to say so you know the part I like about you know so that's what I like about classical music but non-classical I also listen to like you know maybe 40 percent uh, of the time uh, of the of the non-classical music let's just call it pop okay uh, you know uh, so of the pop music I usually listen to you know, uh, well, pop, you know, <laughs> like among pop music, there's a special g genre, which is just called pop, you know, th that's basically the songs you listen, uh, the radio plays, you know, uh, Madonna, Prince, that's uh, old, you know, 20 years ago, today you have whatever Swift, whatever Swift and whatever, you know, this <laughs> today's so Britney Spears, for example, that's she's also you know twenty years ago, nineteen nineties, uh, two thousands. So anyway, so of the pop music, I listen to well some of the pop, uh, and uh, but mostly a few things I like. I, I want uh, I, I I'll say about that is that I like the dance music, electronica dance music, like frenzy, brainless dance music, <laughs> you know, this, uh, for example, let me show you some examples, uh, dance mu music, so this is my music blog, actually, so, um, so here are some of the songs I, dance frenzy songs, now, uh, like many of them, for example, th this Blue Army, like, usually they are not, uh, for example, this song is played in the dance dance revolution, you know, like just beats, you know, like brainless, no meaning, no meaning, uh, just beats. Uh, and uh, for example, there are several uh, electro house, okay, uh, okay, this one is good, listen to this one, okay, let me show you, oh yeah, th this Miami Hotline Miami OST is fantastic. Now, th the music I'm showing now here is some of the um, you know brainless dance music. Oh, they removed it. <laughs> but, you know, the YouTube Google scumbag. You know, since about two years ago, they stopped giving you reasons why a a, a, a video is removed. Usually, it, it just show show blank like no reason but used to give reason but in this case however they do give you a reason so it says this video has been removed by the user okay so anyway electro house music uh, I, and by the way elect, you know I noticed because I've been you know listening on YouTube you uh, uh, thanks thanks for what uh, so the you uh, the Electro house music, yeah. I go to YouTube. You know, when when you see, or you know, you just search for dance music, uh, 2019 or two, you know, or you know, popular dance music or popular gaming music. You know, you type it, and <laughs> all the icons are these chicks like that. You know, hot chicks. So, so that means actually, so these dance music are are actually very sexual. You know, they, I guess. Yeah, I suppose you know they 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 are typically some kind of you know they they drive your um, your nerves to uh, you know like you know like you you go to YouTube you see all the all hot girls as icons they they this so this dance music they yeah they certainly have some a lot of sex drive sexual drive anyway so 
So check out this one, okay? Hotline Miami, Miami, Hotline Miami OST. Uh, I think that's a game or something. I I don't remember, but you know this this is an example uh, where I you know I I like you know the brain brainless beats. Uh, uh, then there is uh, li these two. Okay, let me show you the the ones I recommend. This this one, electro dance music, uh, MPIA three. I think that's also from a uh, video game or something. I don't remember. But anyway, so listen, check out this one, the first one, the MPIA three or the Miami Hotline. They are like oh, brainless, uh, kind of brainless, brainless frenzy. That's what I call. Um, and then did and and they have I guess yeah this is from uh, this music is from a video game I guess Hotline Miami so they have this <laughs> artwork this artwork is fantastic this artwork uh I you know I so I don't know who who is the artist I should actually I should find out it's surprised I I surprised surprised you know I I never uh, I didn't um look for it before. Uh, and this dance music, so uh, they, um, yeah, so the, you got this picture. This picture represents the <laughs> the relations of male and female of human animals. Uh, okay. You know, all the guys wants to get a girl and uh, the girl, <laughs> of course, pretty young girl. That's the key. Thing here always it must be young girl the guy's age doesn't matter much the girl is more uh, you know it's uh but anyway so that's that's a big digression and let's get back to uh oh yeah so a uh, list of romantic era composers so late romantic let's see uh who are the late romantics uh late classical era early romantic Okay, Beethoven I don't like. And dun 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 Uh so who who else? Uh late so those those are Ah Jesus this oh god this page is like hundred pages You know, there's there's some funny thing. What's going on here? You know, there's the funny thing these days. Wait, do do I have the um? You know, these days, these browsers, these fucking companies. In, I guess I'm surprised that Wikipedia is doing it these days. You know, they control. I mean, they 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 log of your scroll. Like when you scroll to a page, they know they measure it. Like they know which part of the page you stopped, especially on Twitter, Facebook, you know, all the social networks uh, websites. So they measure. You know, they they want to know where you stop so that they can uh, they can get more info about you, like what you like, what you don't like, and you know, one way you you can tell is that when you scroll a page. It does not scroll naturally. Like right now, I'm pressing the space bar. I mean, I'm page, page, you know, the thumb down. It does not behave like this right now. Okay. So w when this happens, you you know, usually there's a JavaScript going on. This 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 fucking uh, yeah, and and fuck the programmers. You know why this happens? Because this. Programmers, elite, you know, Unix, Linux, loving, open source, loving, Fox. They got us this, you know, into this. You see, this is in Firefox, okay? In Firefox, I have JavaScript turned off, you know, no JavaScript. Now I press uh, page down key. You see how, how this page, this is how it normally uh, behaves. But when you have a website that uses JavaScript to 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 monitor, you know, uh, where you stopped, you know, uh, at what part of the page for how long, you get this, you get this behavior. 
these 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 fucking you know companies and 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 indirectly due to the fucking programmers and among programmers you know part of it is due to this open source elite Unix loving fuckheads. You know I I say that because well it's you can you know it's kind of it's exaggeration but not really you know because you know you you look at the society you uh, it's not it's not their fault you know it's not like oh these elite people unix lovers you know linux open source lovers they cause this it's not like that but rather they they are part of the reason to blame though i mean they they have also responsibility everyone you know basically uh, you know this is this is you know this is a web page this this is made by programmers programmers are us you know and uh, among us you know there are many different you know uh, philosophies and people and personalities but uh, you know big part of them is open source people so uh, what, what i'm saying is that it's all responsible responsible okay for this kind of a uh, trend you know what society goes into you know how today's you know tracking and ads everywhere why are they every ads everywhere because the open source fuckheads because every time they see you know they 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 run the ad blockers or whatever you know or they every time every day they whenever there's opportunity they flame you know the ad you know the you know corporations but that's 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 a problem, you know. So they think, oh, that's not us at all. That's not me, <laughs> you know. Kasa, you are fuckhead. No, because you know, you see what they do. You see, society is not like what you what what will happen is not. It does not depend solely on what you do. It depends on complex reasons. For example, if you are, you know, if you have an ideology. And you ignore reality. You ignore, you know. Let's say you say Emacs is the best editor. Oh, Emacs has no problem at all. No problem, zero. Emacs is, in fact, the uh, you know ultimate uh, editor. You know, you you deny all the problems. You know, people points points about Emacs or whatever. Okay, that's that's when you are you know ignoring. You are you are not seeing reality. You are living in an ideology. And uh, so whatever you do, even though you think it's, it, you know, it helps Emacs because, you, you know, you say all the good things about Emacs, you deny problems. So you think you are like the big help to Emacs community. No, but actually y you are doing damage to Emacs. You know, when you, can, when you for example, one, one, one cause is that you, you are a strong believer of certain ideology and you ignore reality. That's one example. There are others, of course. Of course, one obvious, you know, is some people, you know, just always flame Emacs for, for whatever reason, for no reason at all. But anyway, so what I'm saying is that, so why do I blame a lot to the open source people? Because they, they, they are in ideology and, you know, they, you know, they just, you know, programmers are just like every uh, known programmers, you know, like I used to think, uh yeah at least you know maybe uh, subconsciously that programmers are different somehow or nerds are different somehow from uh, normal people because you know we so we see the truth or whatever that's not true so i you know programmers are just like average common people they believe in f first of all for example they f they follow fashions and fad just like you know the bunch of girls following you know the king kardashian you know who made a sex tape and become a million hundred you know a thousand million year you know the you have a gaggle millions of girls following kardashian whatever she wears today oh all the girls you know gonna you know what they want to buy whatever you know she's wearing same thing happens in programmers community you just that uh, you you usually don't think you, know, you don't know that, that you know programmers like for example the best example is is that you go to hacker news you see you know the programmers they, they talk about idioms what or the latest programming language that's the that's that's the same thing ignorant you know they never studied actually know about the thing so uh, well that's a little rant about that uh, you know about this you know this 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 browser behavior this you know javascript fucking uh shit so if if i you know but i'm surprised actually wikipedia is doing it uh i 
don't think I have uh, noticed Wikipedia. What you know, I've we have tried in Firefox. You can see in Firefox it doesn't have that behavior. Uh, hold on a second. Magn magnify. So in Firefox, you see this is how it. That's how it behaves. But in uh, Chrome, it's not like that. I think it's. Um, due to JavaScript. So one way to be sure to find out is to turn JavaScript off, but we are not going to do that. OK, so that's uh, that's another topic. I tried to link uh, with, but I, uh, what I the, um, oh yeah, the, you know, the uh, posting links in the, <laughs> in YouTube. Yeah, they, they have automatic, uh, some kind of, you know, like filter like whenever you post the link some links not all links though some yeah i don't know you know because these days google are you know doing a lot of censorship and and all that, and you know uh, that sort of thing okay 20 uh we've we've been talking for uh 36 minutes actually i have been talking only for 20 minutes because first 10 minutes is uh yeah, i was away so let's talk about today's topics then um uh yeah Sean so um yeah so we we talked about music so um so we I think we're gonna do another 30 minutes so we're gonna talk about some keyboards uh, some web dev JavaScript some goodies I'm gonna show you some goodies okay so keyboard JavaScript and uh, yeah, possibly I'll do a live coding of JavaScript uh, if, if there's interest. Are you interested, Sean? Do you program? Are you a programmer? If so, do you program JavaScript? Uh, what like what do you uh, uh, do? And and where are you from, by the way? What country? Uh, what what state? So we might do some live coding of JavaScript. And uh, oh, you are learning JavaScript. Okay, so. I guess we'll we'll do some JavaScript today. Then you like to see, um, yeah. So let's do let's begin. Um, so first of all, let's go to my keyboard blog. Okay, keyboard. Uh, check, check. Okay, I'm still good. So keyboard blog. Uh, okay. So a friend showed me this synthesizer. Uh, he said he bought it. This this thing is like eight hundred eight hundred dollars, you know. When I was a, a teenager, around twenties, I played a lot with synthesizers. Uh, so this is around uh, nineteen ninety to, well, even in year two thousand. I had uh, so yeah, up to year two thousand. So it's like twenty years ago. I played I played a lot with synth. So I learned, you know. Uh, the bit, the fundamentals, you know, how they, you know, how how they control, how do you control a sound? Uh, what kind of technology are there? You know, there's a addictive synth, there's a subtractive synth, there's a, a sampling sampling synth. Um, you know, so anyway, so I'm interested, but you know, I haven't been doing any for 20 years, and and today I don't have money to do any of these. So anyway, this. Uh, looks like a good one. He bought it, so it's you know, if you like it, buy it for my you know. If you buy for my website, I would get you know two percent, four percent of you know whatever. <clears throat> okay, and that's a synth. And there's some keyboard questions on Reddit. People are asking me, uh, you know, private message. By the way, so I would prefer public messages whenever you have you know questions for me doesn't matter programming uh, keyboard or whatever so uh, you know one thing you can do so that's a new uh, Moog uh, I see I didn't know it's a Moog Moog is, was a popular uh, you know the classic brand for synthesizers they they I think they are famous for making analog synth you know not digital they, they were famous for making analog uh, synth so anyway so yeah uh 
Uh, don't scripting okay great so about keyboard yeah so I got two questions about keyboard and uh, so by the way you know I would prefer to post questions publicly because <laughs> you know I, I spent like one hour or two hours just answering questions for the past like you know 10 20 15 years well especially in the past five years uh, every day, two you know, two hours. Wow, well, actually more than that. You know, especially when I was doing Ergo Emacs project. So you know, I get uh, and especially private messages are no good. You know, I also got emails. These days, I don't. I basically I barely read emails. Um, private messages because I have to answer. You know, every day. You know, just almost the you know similar questions I ask answer every day. Uh, people usually, you know, I have written a lot, you know, there are like a few thousand articles, you know, uh, like Emacs questions or keyboard questions, mostly you can, uh, you know, I, I, you know, I, 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 I almost always write out, I try to, you know, whatever, you know, opinions or after I studied some subject. So anyway, try, try post to YouTube comments or let me, let me, let me mention this. So I have a Reddit. Uh, so you go to Reddit, uh, Reddit XA, okay, I have like a public, like XA fan club, okay, this one, XA Reddit, this is, this is, let's, let's give it a name, XA fan, fan club, okay, post here, you know, it's a sad thing, I used to have comments on my website, like every page, you know, like I, so I answer questions on my comments on my website all day, um, every page you, you can post comment, but then then the discuss you know forum they started to charge, you know those again you, you know discuss started like ten years ago, it was uh, more than ten years ago. It was a way to have comments on your website. You, <laughs> no, you know there's a history to that too because before, in year two thousand. A web page is just a web page. There's no comment, you know, there's no common thing. Uh, then it got invented, you know, then then almost every page got comments, you know, there's a, you can post your comments. Then after five or ten years ago, that kind of, you know, went away. I mean, well, um, that didn't, it, people started to hide the comments, like only when you click like uh, you know view comments then the comment shows so there's a lot of story about website comments you know uh, or in, you know originally they are not all crap but these days it's like all crap uh, all like all nonsense like no real content like every you know and again I would blame I blame the f fucking open source programmers okay uh, that's kind of exaggeration but I blame the people that you know the like there's this group of people, you sh you know, it's called hackers typically, uh, and they have opinions. Of course, they have opinions about everything. You typically see their opinions on hacker news, uh, and before that on Slack uh, uh, slash dot. Okay, uh, th so their opinion, whenever it comes from, you know, they have opinions about how you should post, how you should, you know, before these news groups, how you should, you know, this or that. You know, typically nerds, you know, and, and my followers, uh, I suppose, you know, a lot of you are <laughs> like that. They, they're just wrong. They are just bad. So, anyway, I'm, uh, you know, let's not go into that because we're going to, that's another 10 or 20 minutes talk. But anyway, my point, um, what I want to say is that they are, so today we have the situation where you go to reddit or any any place youtube reddit or on twitter or facebook you look at the comments like 95% you know vast you know majority of the comment 95 like 95% more than 95% you know it's all contentless crap and by you know superman batman you know <laughs> jesus but you know it's not, not supposed to be like that you know you, you you don't like we we get used to it today you don't even feel it today you you just look you know every day you wake up you know go to your social network or whatever comments you know oh you know someone you know, read it you know you think that's normal that's not normal 
That's you know it's supposed to be comment your thoughts. You know you, you don't like post shit post or you know a uh, lame. You know oh thank you or you know the, 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 the crap. It's not supposed to be like that. This is related to today's society. You know politics censorship. It's all related. You know and you know the fuckheads, the open source fuckheads, the hackers, the you know f Unix philosophy type of people. They want you know they want. <laughs> Oh my god, their opinions are just so bad on everything, you know, that, so, so to me, okay, to me, you know, I think they have, you know, they, they are the problem, they are part of the problem, as, uh, at least among programmers, you know, I'm a programmer, so that's the uh, places I, you know, my community, you know, that's how you know me, you know, uh, and, you know, so, so that's how, that's people I criticize, I, you know, I, you, you know, you, so I don't know about lawyers or what other people do, you know. Um, so, but among programmers, these these hackers types, they, their opinions is just bad. So, and this is all related. This is important because because all the website, Google, Facebook, are uh, who who made it? It's them. We made it. We made these sites. Yeah, but you may say, oh, my, but my boss told me, you know, or the marketing told me, not, not, not exactly true. You have a big influence, you know, how the tech grows. So anyway, so, um, so yeah, so the, 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 the point is about, you see, you look at the comments, you know, uh, like, you know, you go to Emacs, even uh, Emacs, Reddit Emacs, you know, something technical. You, you, all the comments, is, you know, 90% is crap, is contentless. That's a key thing. I mean, even though, even if there's no swearing words, that's fine. You know, today the social justice scan, fuckheads, you know, they ban swearing. But anyway, you know, remember, swearing. We liberals fought for it. It was conservatives, conservatives back in nineties who censored. You know, you know, you cannot say fuck. You cannot this or that. Say this. You know, they censor it. No, it, it's hundred eighty de degree turn. We f we fought for it. You know, because back then, if you look at the English dic dictionary, sometimes you cannot find a word such as fuck or you know fornication or <laughs> it is true you know in some you know that was back then in eight in 1980s or, or 90s some dictionaries do not print those words uh anyway so back to the you know the website comments you look at them i mean so swearing okay there's no swearing words but you know it's like contentless that's the key thing I mean, even there's even even if there's no shit post, posting, but every post is like no content and posted by you know random Superman Jesus, you know this anonymous fucks by you know loved by these Unix fuckheads. Privacy, oh privacy, or oh, open source, or oh, Richard Stallman, or oh, or oh, fucking Free Software Foundation, or oh, ethics, ethics, uh, these fucks. They are fucks because they 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 they. they they are not, uh, you know, uh, uh, they are ignoring reality. That's what it is. They are so remotely, you know, out of touch. They they are not, you know, uh, seeing reality. They, you know, they are, you know, and you know, that's ca cause problem. And this applies to your personal life too. You know, if you have something, uh, you cannot ignore it. You know, you. You have to, you know, you cannot believe, you know, so I believe, I believe I'm the smartest guy on earth. You know? <laughs> I believe I'm the greatest Emacs coder. <laughs> if you believe that, you know, you can't, well, if that, if that is true, then, then maybe that's, you know, then, then it's good. But if it's a little bit untrue, then it's still good, you know, I'm still pretty good. But if I'm, you know, I'm, if I'm not a good Emacs coder and all, at all, but, but I believe, you know, my belief and reality is, you know, there's, if there's a huge gap, it's gonna create a problem for me, you know. So this applies to personal, you know, things as well, as well as, you know, general um, society, you know, you don't want to, um, <coughs> Anyway, so um, so what what are we saying? Talking about? So I was saying uh, so many things. <laughs> One thing leads to another. Uh, so I was saying, you know, so there is this uh, Reddit r slash xa. That's you can post comments here. It's kind of like my xa fan fan club. 
um, and Reddit uh, and on uh, on YouTube. So you can uh, post uh, comments on my YouTube. I love to see that, and I hope to get back com to you know put back comments on my websites discuss forum. Oh yeah, I was saying you know they they began as free like uh, ten years ago, then about two years ago they started to charge. I mean they started to about three years ago they started to uh, have ads, but however you can turn off image ads, but then but the text ads textual ads are forced you have no choice i mean either you pay them like ten dollars a month or they're gonna uh, display text ads image ads you, you can turn off okay but not but after after a while after half a year or so they <laughs> they even stop that they now they, they force image ads on your website uh if you don't pay you know otherwise you have to pay them to use their service, uh, the you know the common service, and their their ads is like you know lose fat or this this weird trick to lose fat, you know in in ten day, you know those kind of ads, you know and uh, skinny you know girl in bikini or some kind of you know lurid you know dramatic you know pictures plastered all over your page, all over my web page if you use them. Uh, so that's um, anyway. That's how things are. You know that. W why is it like that? Because open source fucks. You know because they need money. You know they they they. It's not. You know they need money to run. You you, you cannot blame them to force ads. They need money. But where they get money? You think you donate? Like every time when ads come up, these fuckhead open source fuckheads, they they go over Reddit or you know everywhere. They'll say, "Oh no, don't put ads. We we I'll be happy to donate. You know what? You know whatever ten dollars." They all say that. Reality, they nothing like that happens. I know because I mentioned this before. Because I when I don't have donate when I had no ads donate button, I get like oh five ten dollars a month. Now, if I have ads, I get you know few hundred dollars a month. It's a big difference. Even even most of my readers, of course, you know these tech geeks. We you know my community. They already have you know ad blockers uh, on. So you have to stick with reality, you know. So these geeks, you know, so they um, anyway. So the discuss, yeah. So they you know they they don't have money. They have to you know. Keep you know they have to stay alive, so they f they are forcing ads. Cannot really blame them, you know. It's just the, how things are. What, but you know because they you know they have and by the way they are not open source. They are not exactly in their source code. I don't think it's open source. Um. Anyway. So let's go to so yeah so keyboard questions actually I mean I want to answer the uh, keyboard questions actually so I I got this question uh, uh, Moog Voy Voyager so Bob Moog started with the Moog Voyager that that's a Moog uh, synthesizer I guess okay so. So someone asked me the question about uh, he says okay um, your blog about your keyboard uh, so he says I should I sh he should learn touch type or maybe not and uh, so it's kind of a long question uh, it's kind of uh, it's not a specific question it's a bunch of things uh, so let me talk about. Should you learn touch type? Do you do you touch type, Sean? Uh, so the question is, should should you learn touch type? And also, he talked about some uh, keyboard layout. Uh, okay, let me talk about uh, a, a little bit about uh, typing. So if you want to know everything about typing or repetitive strain injury, read my blog okay you know just search Xali keyboard you'll find it on this page there are like there are more than uh, 20 articles about that uh, so should you learn touch type 
that okay there's no absolute answer okay I'm saying this because you know otherwise I would tell you yeah you should because I've been touch typing since since 1987 on a, on a typewriter and since since 1990s on computers and in 1994 on Vora keyboard so I would love to tell you yeah you should but actually so the truth is uh, it actually depends on you it, the, the major question is how much you actually type so if you type a lot you should learn touch type okay if you type if you don't touch uh, type that much really there's no uh, need it doesn't there's no need actually you, you are you are you are fine you know w without if you are a programmer again programmer is not enough to get to uh, um, <coughs> programmers do not type that much okay what you actually should do is to uh, use a key logger okay let me show you here uh, uh, software okay you go to the software section and you will see uh, the key log security section then there's this page list of key logging software you know pick one of them key logger is important because then you actually know scientifically how much you actually type you know like most people programmers especially programmers you know they think oh I type all day therefore you should press control you know with cap logs or whatever good crap you know bunch of shit nonsense Emacs Emacs fuckheads you know they tell you to use Emacs default keys no first of all you want to measure t tell me exactly how many keystrokes you type a day okay so so get a key log software okay so that's that's on this page then uh, then uh, then check out this article how many keystrokes programmer type a day so once you have a key logger you measure it for a month then you know how many how many keystrokes then you can read this article and compare so you get an idea oh how much I actually type among you know average you know whatever you know like if like most programmers whatever they type a day on average over a year you know of their working days okay can be can be typed for 10 minutes like basically they only type for 10 minutes 10 minutes a day that's it you know if they type continuously uh, you know that's maybe that's surprising okay you, you know if you don't believe me, believe me measure you know get a key log measure your key strokes count then you have a scientific basis about how much you actually type then you can decide you know whether you should learn touch type or not the thing about touch type type touch typing is extreme is a efficiency you know it's like when you practice let's say when you play football you know american football you know ram ball you <laughs> let's see who is bigger you know you run and uh, ram other people uh, american football you know you that's a professional sport okay or suppose you are doing Kung Fu you know you you must have watched Kung Fu movies you know they talk about uh, you know all the techniques training every day and thinking about how to fight you know <laughs> or even MMA you know mixed martial art today they if if they are if you are a professional you think about all day you dream about it you know the techniques or whatever same thing with the mathematicians or programmers you sleep you drink dream about math problems and for programming the <laughs> same thing so they also so w what I'm saying is that yeah so so why are you mentioning this uh, professional sports or whatever so the, what I'm saying is that if you want to be a professional okay you have to follow the professional techniques you know if you know for example football they are training whatever um, the proper ways to run for example if you are a professional pianist there is a proper po posture you know if you are a competitive competitive pianist you know when you grew up you want to be a, a pianist you know you have to practice just like tennis you know practice hours you know three hours a day then you know uh, music theory whatever and when you practice it's not just random you you there, there are you know lots of developed techniques you have to sit in a certain way your fingers you know must type in a certain way 
okay same thing with a professional football you know uh, whatever professional athlete running you know you have to there's some or marathon you know there's a you know practice or, or weight training weight lifting you know there are ways you developed you know to increase your power or performance uh, truly you know not just you know if you just you know like if you just think oh i'm gonna be a pro football player without going to professional training you're not you're not, not going to be okay well in the past maybe but not today today you there's a lot of scientific you know or maybe you have to read books so you have to so they, they are developed techniques same thing applies to typing so so once you um so if you really want to type you know given uh, you know a certain amount of typing task you have to do every day if if that is a good quantity okay now if you touch type you'll be fine you, you touch type you know if it's not too big you touch type you can do it for a year no problem if you do not you're gonna have a problem because if you don't follow the techniques you but you have to do this amount of fixed amount of work you're gonna take you know two three times longer and you're gonna get tired you're gonna you know have problems so so anyway anyway i, I went on a long uh kind of digressed a lot but my point is that whether you should learn touch type it's actually it's not truly important it's not like oh you have to it's like depends on you how much you type you know uh, so if you want to learn it, that's great. If you don't, t you know, if you are a programmer, you know, you you don't have, you know, you don't write documentations, you don't write blogs, you don't have to uh, learn touch type. That's the thing. Uh, yeah, that's the thing about touch type. In fact, you know, another, okay, let me talk about another thing about touch type is that, uh, in fact, most people do not because because touch type, including programmers, <laughs> I think most people, most programmers do not touch type because touch typing is actually a kind of a uh, learned skill. You have to actually spend an hour for a month to actually get, you know, start to touch type, you know, 50 words per minute. So it's kind of a acquired skill. And, uh, um, um, and uh, yeah, so most people don't, and and it's okay because you know you don't really need if you don't touch, you know, if you do, you are not a writer, and and also let me mention another thing about touch typing. Okay, let me mention another thing about touch typing. Uh, let's uh, let's go to typing section. Then let's go to <laughs> oh yeah, most people programmers in you know in particular. They don't touch type, but they say, oh, I touch type. You know, like when you talk about these things, people, you know, like not not able to touch type is like uh, a, a, a stigma. OK, it's, it's like you don't want to go out, you know, as a programmer, you don't want to say, oh, I don't I don't know how to touch type, you know, <laughs> so people don't say it. But rather they say, oh, I touch type, but in my own way, like, you know, everyone has a, their own way of touch typing, like they think. So let me tell you, you know, don't, don't live in a fantasy. OK, let me tell you, how, how, do, you de how do you determine whether you actually touch type? Like this girl, cover, you know, take a towel, you know, a blanket, blanket, or, OK, cover your hand on top of your hand, put a towel on your keyboard and try to work like, work like that for 10 minutes. If you can, you touch, you do touch type. If you cannot, no, you don't touch type. You don't touch t type in your fucking own way. You don't touch type, period, okay? That's how you judge how, whether you touch type or not. Uh, you know, don't, don't, don't uh, kid yourself. You know, we are, are all biased, you know. Uh, so that's about touch typing, okay? So, and by the way, it's not, you know, necessary like that you have to learn it. It just depends on how much you type. Uh, so, okay, that's about touch typing, and there's some other questions about, um, okay, I've been talking a lot uh, today. Uh, so you do, uh, so you, uh, so Sean says you do touch type QWERTY on ergo, uh, on ergonomic keyboard, and uh, what's ergo P? Uh, 
so so what I'm so what I'm saying let's go back to the uh, how many program how, how many type you type a day uh, and uh, key logger right get a key logger and yeah let's talk about uh, layout something about layout so they are you know different uh, pro, uh, software layout keyboard layout okay so uh, so these I have like 30 articles all about layout um, and I want to show you these. Have you seen this, Sean? <laughs> I like to show you my web pages. So there's an interactive. Let's let me show you this. There is this interactive. Oops, typed it wrong. Interactive char frequency counter. So you know it's fun to use. I I did I wrote this JavaScript app to. Um, you know to compute you know the key f letter frequency so I have le letter frequency in English and also uh, computer languages character fre frequency and on this page you can measure JavaScript Golan uh, and C C++ Java you know you can see what characters punctuation characters are most frequently used for that language and also include Haskell. I think I added Haskell recently. So Haskell. <laughs> um, so you know, you just copy your code. Let's go to my code. Okay, let's go to code somewhere. And uh, let's go to. Uh, okay, so let's go to code. Let's see. Um, okay, so we got here is a big, ch uh, you know, five hundred lines of JavaScript code. So you go to this page, select or paste, and uh, magnify, and you can see the character count. So comma is the most used, most frequent in JavaScript. After that, it's parenthesis, then period. Okay, so that's about that. So what I want to talk about, yeah, the uh, keyboard layout. So they are um, uh, keyboard layout. So where is it? Uh, keyboards. Uh, layout. So there are different layouts. Um, I kind of spent a long time talking about this today. I wonder if I should. Uh, good morning, Daniel. So Sean says Ogo Docs. Okay, Ogo Docs. Uh, Ogo Docs is great. So uh, uh, okay, I talked a lot. Let me have a break. Uh, let me drink. So I got five people watching now. Great. This is energy drink, by the way. So this is, this is, uh, this is span. This is like Red Bull, but a cheap, brandless name, brand nameless brand, cheap version. Then, as usual, the grape juice, hundred percent juice, grape juice of grape flavor. Did you know that today the veggies and fruits we eat? are very different from let's say 400 years ago <laughs> you know so today we have you know orange you know orange grapes big red grapes so uh, green grapes seedless grapes and watermelon and whatever melons you know <laughs> few hundred years ago they are like 10 times smaller or oh, five times smaller maybe <laughs> you know so it's all engineering dn you know those all um engineered all the you know fruits and veggie are engineered by us oh my god i talked a lot non-stop talking so uh so back to so we got actually we got a lot of things to talk about we haven't um we gotta talk about keyboard i gotta answer the question here but basically the other thing he's uh kind of asking is about he's talking about lay uh keyboard layouts okay so keyboard layouts uh let's go to keyboard layouts um 
so this I have this article that's a survey of keyboard layouts. So you have QWERTY. Keyboard layout means you know the let letter arrangements on your keyboard. So you have QWERTY, Vorac, uh, you have Programmer's Vorac, and I give analysis of their efficiency. For example, in particular, on Programmer's Vorac, I detail there's an issue about efficient layout for numbers, you know, number row, you know, programmers lay, uh, programmers Vorac layout and also French layout, they invert the number and symbols for the number row. So when you type the number key, it actually types a, num uh, a symbol instead, you know, like normally when we type a number row on top, it's a number, but the programmers Vorac, they swap it. So in order in order to type numbers you actually to, you have to press the shift key and this is done also for french keyboard layouts so i also have a uh articles about french keyboard layout and a german keyboard layout efficient german keyboard layout and efficient french keyboard layout you know and french letter frequency and german letter frequency and also chinese input method and Japanese input layouts input method you know I teach I teach you <coughs> you know like I study you know these things and uh, about efficiency so here this article you can learn about how to type Japanese even if you don't know Jap Japanese you know like right now you can just go to your operating system or you go to Google Gmail they have a choice that lets you uh, choose a Japanese input system or Chinese input system so you can learn you can actually type Jap uh, Japanese you know by reading this article and also I show you the Japanese layout they they have also uh, great varieties of input systems now input systems is getting more complex you know yeah I got a lot to talk about so here is a Chinese input methods you can also learn to type it uh, in fact, you can do it in Emacs. I have an article, but anyway, just just search for <laughs> search for Kasa Emacs Chinese input. You will see the article and uh, with step by step instruction of how to um, insert Chinese. Yeah, I'm not going to do it, even though it just take two minutes. But anyway, so I want to show you so input method. So first of all, we have layouts. Okay, so first of all, we have the layout. Let me talk about the layout. Uh, layout, <coughs> uh, keyboard layout. So first of all, we have the different layouts for English uh, language. Now most of them, excuse me, most most of them are designed for efficiency of input. Um, so you know, so this uh, program is for right. So I was saying I have an article that discuss whether if you swap the number row with symbols is that actually more efficient so i have an article there here efficient layout for numbers this is a scientific study okay don't believe <laughs> you know wherever you uh, want to say something about this keyboard thing most people vast majority people's opinions you know you see that they talk about oh i like this way or i like that way uh, caps lock or whatever it's all based on habit you want to base on scientific as much as possible Sci scientific methods <coughs> so anyway <coughs> excuse me oh that's so bad excuse me let me cough okay I'm back so what I'm saying is that um, so I studied here, you know, efficiency layout for numbers. You know, I studied. Um, oh, actually, this is another thing. This is about uh, arrangement of letters uh, of the uh, numbers. How, how it, which way is most efficient? But there's another issue about about keyboard layout. Is inverted number row better? So I also made a study of that. It is not, it is not better. Okay, in any absolute sense, it's better only if you, for certain kind of typing tasks. So programmers Vorac, 
if you are a C programmer, well, maybe it's better, okay. But if you are, a, you know, if you uh, are a science scientific programmer or math mathematician, <laughs> it's you know you swap the numbers, it's no good. <coughs> you can you know it's very inefficient. So this programmer's uh, Vorac is not necessarily good. Depend depends on what programming language you use most of the time, and also depends on what kind of uh, type of programming you are, you know, doing uh, as your job. So anyway, this article discussed lots of these uh, layouts. Uh, then there are also some efficient layout design for German, you know, German language or French or Portuguese. <coughs> so anyway, th this guy has a question about layers. Uh, okay, let me talk about this. Um, so let's see, what, do I have any comments? Comments, comments, guys. Uh, so let's talk, so let, so I'm saying uh, layout, okay. Uh, Yeah, so there's different. So so layout is the first step to type. Well, first of all, you need a keyboard hardware, okay. <laughs> then then the other issue is the layout, the arrangement of letters. But but after that, but how do you type, for example, this uh, math symbols? For example, let's magnify. Let me show you. How do you type that? How do you type that delta? Uh, how do you type, for example, the math symbol <laughs> delta? For example, how do you type a right arrow? You know, how do you type a uh, cat face? Oh, cat, cat face. Yeah, <laughs> cat face <laughs> emoji. You know, so you cannot type this. Let me show you how to type Chinese then. So um, set input method, okay. Uh, Chinese pinyin, okay. Let's type the word uh, love, okay. This <laughs> dramatic. Let's say love, okay. You see that is the character for love in simplified Chinese. That is, okay. Let's say uh, my dear lover, okay. You know you add honey. Okay, so you say you 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 uh you say like this. Okay, so that's like my dear, my beloved. Uh, you know that's how you type Chinese. Okay, so let's switch back. Um, uh, oops, where well, my oh God, my. Softlight keys and Vorac and uh, everything is screwed. Now I need to exit the input method in Emacs. So that's command X. No, uh, wait. Meta X. Meta X. What the? Oh God. Save buffer entitled. Wait, this is good. Uh, ah, let's let's forget that. Oh yeah, so, so <laughs> basically, I want to call the s switch input method to switch back to English. So what are we saying? So Chinese. So yeah. So you see all these characters. You see, you see all these characters. They are not on your keyboard. Your keyboard only has like you know, thirty keys for letters. So, in order to type all these, you need what's called a input method. Now, for example, I'm typing an arrow like R A for arrow. Uh, that's a brief or sum. Uh, I need to get out of the. Chinese input method. Let's see. Uh, 
I forgot what's the command. So let's open xa emacs input method. So Daniel says, I've mentioned that I'm practicing Vorac. This has been going on for weeks, for, for months, I think. And maybe 30 words per minute. Yeah, only 30, which is kind of worse than I can do with QWERTY. I'm more comfortable with QWERTY. I need to switch. Yeah, but you are also, yeah, you are doing Daniel. So you are trying to learn Vorac. Meanwhile, uh, trying to retain your quality skill. That's no good. You are, you know, you're gonna take you one year to learn Vorac. You have to do, if you really want to do it, do it cold turkey. You know, pick a month, like summer vacation or whatever. Pick one month. Learn, you know, don't, don't ever touch type quality again. Don't, you know, you know, if you want to learn Vorac, just focus on Vorac one hour a day. After one month, you'll be 60 word per minute for sure. 60 is, you know, more than most people can, you know, like it's kind of like what people, average people can do. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, you know, because if you try to learn Vorak, you know, but meanwhile, try also try to uh, retain quality, you know that that's gonna uh, you, you are not going to learn Vorak, uh, you know. That's my advice because I know uh, you know. I, I, uh, anyway, okay, there it is. Chinese uh, Emacs Chinese input. So this page shows you how to toggle input method. Yeah, that's a command I want to call. Toggle input method. Okay, finally I'm back in English. Okay, so what I'm saying is that if you want to type math symbols, if you write math or if you want to type Chinese or Japanese or Indian or Russian, you know, the Cyrillic, Cyrillic alf alphabet, you know, or, you know, Arabic, <coughs> you know, you need to type things on, not on your keyboard. That's when you need uh, what's so-called input method, including you know, this abbreviation, right arrow, uh, left arrow, up arrow. You know, this is also a method to input. So that, that's also, usually you don't call this input method, but it is actually, uh, technically, it's also an input method. So anyway, input method is about when you need to type something that's not on your keyboard. You know, you don't have a key. In a lot of situations, you have that situation, you know, it's, 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 so input method in a sense is, uh, <coughs> um, uh, use, uh, necessary, useful. Um, so, so yeah, I was talking about keyboard layout, then you have input method. Now there's another thing related. Okay. That is shortcut layout. Most people don't know this, you know, you have, you know, hacker, keyboard hackers or Reddit mechanical keyboard, you know, forum. They, you, they don't know about this, including all the Emacs idiots, uh, elite, you know, the, the uh, people. Let me tell you, so what, what is the, excuse me, hold on a second. <coughs> oh my God, that, that went up. So anyway, what is the, um, uh, the shortcut keyboard, um, shortcut layout. So you have the letter layout, you have input methods. The other thing you have is the shortcut layout. Most people don't think of this. Shortcut layout, layout is, for example, copy is control C, paste is control V, and so on. And in Emacs, you have a bunch, and in VI, you have, you know, lots of others, uh, you know, a lot, a, lo a, lo a lot of them too. And also in Photoshop, you know, so the shortcut layout, layout is also, uh, it's also, uh, a, there's a lot of efficiency involved. In fact, the shortcut layout is, if you are an Emacs user or Vim or Photoshop user, shortcut layout is actually more important than the um, the keyboard letter layout because if you measure I have measured you know if you go to um, Emacs key statistics 
I have measured because for as uh, uh, for programmers, for programmers, the the keystrokes you type, majority of them, at least half of them, depending on actually depend depending on the person, um, but on average, most most of the keys you type are actually not typing, you know, not 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 you know, not uh, typing something straight like that. But rather editing, like opening a file, switch, you know, uh, go to diet, you know, uh, close the buffer, or move to uh, forward, word, backward, you know, new paragraph, new new file, and so on. Things like that. Copy and paste, and so on. Copy, paste, uh, switch window. You know, so the majority of your keystrokes are actually shortcuts, not just you know, input. So therefore. If you are concerned about hand health, the shortcut layout is more important than the letter layout. You know, that like QWERTY and and Vorac. Like if you are thinking, oh, whether should I learn Vorac? You know, so so remember that if you are you know a programmer and you do a lot of programming, then shortcut layout is actually more important. Uh, this applies to Photoshop, you know, users or any three D software users as well. Um, so anyway, I, I talk about a lot of things today. So um, back to the question. So um, so he says, yeah. So and also, yeah. He was saying about talking about the when you have a layout. Some of the layout has layers. What's so called layers, which means when you you hold down some modifier and the letters change. For example, shift key is a layer. Shift, you know, it's one layer. Uh, basically, my opinion about layers is that don't use it. You know, it's the best that you don't have any layer at all. One layer, just one single layer. If you need to type any of these, uh, any other characters, not on your keyboard, use a key. You, you know, there's a lot of techniques for it. For example, a brief is the most efficient. In Emacs or Microsoft Word, okay, it's also available, and available in other editors. Set up a, a brief, and also, <coughs> uh, uh, what what was I going to say? So, oh yeah, he's talking about layers. So layers, for example, what are layers? Let me show you uh, layers. Uh, let's go to software, uh, and. Uh, go to Mac. Um, you see, you see these characters symbols. Those are on Mac. Now, how do you type that? If you press the Option key down, uh, then let me show you. So show show keyboard. Okay. Come on. Where is it? Oh, oh, here it's already shown here. Uh, you see, if I hold down the Shift key, you can see that. You see how they change. Now, if I hold down the Option key, you see they change into they change into Unicode. Some some of these Unicode symbols. This this key uh these symbols has been with. Mac since 1990, at least, you know, yeah, Mac had this, you know, when Windows don't have that. Uh, so anyway, so this is what layers layer is about, you know, they let you type alternatives, you know, symbols or some uh, rarely used uh, symbols. So what I'm saying is that don't use it. Don't use layers. Don't you know that it's uh, you know because they are very inefficient. And also holding down any mod modifier key, the concept of modifier key is the worst for repetitive strain injury. Uh, don't ever you know if you can don't you know remove all such shortcuts. Instead, instead of use key sequence instead. For example. Uh, uh, for example, in soft light keys, it's all key sequence. For example, I want to open a new file. Look at now. Look at the left panel. 
look at the key I press. Okay, I'm going to open a new file. So you see, I'm pressing space C dot. Then Emacs asked me to open a file. You know, that's all all key sequences. You know, don't I? You know, don't hold control, hold down control, meta, whatever. That's no good. Ban them. Uh, I also have an article here. It's under key bindings. That's about this. So this section is is all about shortcut layouts, it's the study of efficiency of shortcut layouts. Okay, so that's uh, that's 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 that. Um, let's go back to. Uh, Today I talk I talked a lot. There's one more question. So this the other guy's question is about. Uh, so he says I use. Uh, oh yeah. So his his question is about Kinesis keyboard versus model. Um, uh, uh, Kinesis advantage versus versus keyboard I O. So this is Kinesis. Uh, this is Kinesis. That's what I use. I showed you many. I showed, I showed my Kinesis many times. That's a that's my Kinesis keyboard. On top is the um, on top is a uh, it's a number pad. I I programmed it as function keys. So so it's all function keys. So um, so I'm using Kinesis. You know, for like four years now. For since when? Since 2000, um, 2016, August. Very good. I recommend it. Okay, if you want to buy it, buy it from my website. I have video reviews here as well. And uh, there's another great keyboard. Actually, all of these here are great. But this uh, keyboard I.O. It's also great. But I never actually used it. I only tried it for like, you know, two minutes. So I, I don't I cannot give you a good opinion about it, but from the design point of view, I think it's very good. It's excellent. So, but his question is like, is kind of like for small hand, which is better? Is Kinesis better or keyboard I/O? I'm afraid I cannot say. You know, even um, I mean because. You know this kind. You know because mo well mostly because I haven't used keyboard I/O. I don't have it. You know I only tr tried it for two minutes. But the the what I'm I, what I want to say is that about keyboard these kind of details, you uh, you, you really um, you can you 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 cannot get the answer from people. You really have to try it yourself, because you know this your hands your hand how you type. Uh, it's all intricate, you know. Words cannot explain it really. So you cannot just, you know, like a lot of people, of course, a lot of people who are also fans of keyboard. They, you know, they read about all this keyboard, like I, you know, like I do. You know, then they cannot decide, oh, whether this is better or that is better. But I like this feature, but that one doesn't have that feature. But that one, however, has the other feature I like. So you know. <laughs> Geeks, you know, make a lot kind of decisions. You know, thinking about these kind of things a lot, as a, as, as a, opposed to some other type of people, they just buy it. You know, you, you, they don't, they don't, they don't spend that much time. You know, you know, worrying about these little details. Anyway, so between, you know, I cannot say. You just have to try it yourself. I cannot really say which one is, you know. Better. They are about the same price, by the way. The keyboard I/O versus the Kinesis. So yeah, you you have to like have you know you know not you have to like use eat both of them for you know for a week actually to actually really say for a certainty your opinions about them. Uh, okay, that answers that question. Um, but I think that's it for today. Because I talked about uh, quite a lot of things today, uh, so I talked about eighty minutes. Uh, yeah, so a lot of comments. I think let me read the comments.
so let me see the comments. Arrow try again. Uh, let's see. Code Turkey. Yeah, Daniel's Code Turkey. Five layers. Okay, yeah, Ergo Docs. Yeah, all those, all those, they like layers. I don't think it's a good idea. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, my opinion is usually unusual. But here's what I said, you know, I, yeah, you know, I, I, so I look the issue, you know, really, I believe you want to start, you want to look at scientific way, okay? Now, first of all, it really depends on how you, how much you type, just like I said about touch typing, okay? Measure it, you know, so once you know how much you actually type, you know, maybe you don't type that much. When you don't type that much, layer is a good thing. It's actually a good thing because layer is a standard uh, way to type, you know, or turn, you know, Unicode symbols. It's a standard. Everyone knows, you know, there's lots of tutorials on the web. You know, it's a common, it's a normal thing. You don't have to spend extra time to learn how, how to set up a brief, how to set in, in Emacs, how to set up, you know, type, you know, what's a code point for some math symbols. You don't have to. You follow you know, most what people do, you know, it's not like Linux, you know, you spend one hour every day trying to configure it, you know, oh, I, I need to configure the font to this, you know, <laughs> so, so yeah, if you don't have hand problems, you don't type, you know, by statistics, you don't type that much, yeah, go, you know, go for layers, that's, you know, you can, you know, there's nothing wrong with that, but what I'm saying, you know, my, this here's what I think. Okay, I think if you really type a lot, you know. So what do you mean type a lot? Give us a concrete example. Example in competition. Let's say there's a marathon. You know, there's a marathon for runners. You know, they they really run. You know, two hours faster than you know they, the speed they run is faster than than you can do for ten minutes running. But anyway, you know. So marathon is a competition, you know, widely popular, fierce. In the same way, there's no marathon for, you know, typing, but, but they are, you know, that's what a lot of people do, you know, jobs, you know, they, they used to be uh, data entry clerks. So, you know, imagine there's a, you know, usually the typing competitions, they last only for one minute. That's not realistic, okay? Like w online, there's lots of typing websites. You know, you c you know, type racer. You compete. You know, like how fast you can type. Oh, 120 words per minute. You know, but those are not realistic. Realistic is you know, you continuously, you know, you if you have a competition, type continuously for one hour. That's kind of more realistic. A little bit more realistic. The more realistic is that you type, you know, you don't continuously type, but however, you keep typing, like if, if you are a writer, you keep typing the whole day, but, but you know, with breaks, a lot of breaks, you know, you think about things, you know, but you have to type a lot, you know, several hours. But anyway, so what I'm saying is that, so if you actually type a lot, okay, or if you have a uh, hand, pain you know you you are you, you know you maybe you visit some doctors for your hand then you will understand then then what i'm saying is that then you will see that the layers approach let's say you are a mathematician your job is to type math formulas every day you know hours typing math formulas so what i'm saying is that then then you will know when you really actually do this lots of quantity of work you all know, then you know, layers is no good. Modifiers, you know, oh, oh, press, you know, mod one, two, you know, for layer one, mod two for layer two, that's no good. That's inefficient one, s slower, and it hurts your hands. It, 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 you know, for the same amount of typing, you know, using layers, using the modifier key, uh, uh, do more harm to your hand. Oh, just so okay. So, so Sean is saying, yeah. So Sean is saying there's a uh, uh, layers. You know, they have special layers that is designed to do some macros. Yeah, macros are good. So, for example, instead of pressing Control Alt Shift S, 
you can just press you know a specific modifier like modifier s yeah that's good so that is like a macro feature i mean so that's good but but, but what i'm saying okay sean you, you, possibly you might try what i'm saying is that even better is to read of your layers like you have on ergo docs you have several thumb keys right try to uh try to remove all of them so instead you know whatever macros you do make the beginning uh, a key sequence as the um as the as your as as, as instead of layers so for example let's say you have three modifier keys mod one mod two mod three on your ergo docs for example so remove all the layers instead make make these these three keys mod one mod two mod three into a leader key now you know leader keys right leader key is basically the first key of a key sequence make them into a special you know leader key then follow whatever so modifier s will be you know modifier you know release the key then press s instead of holding modifier so i think that is more efficient okay uh so last one the imager oh so this is your uh, setup great looks great so you have you have a uh, number pad by the way, is this a programmable keypad? Is it a programmable? Is it just a number pad, or is it a programmable keypad? Now, if it's just a number pad, did you actually remap the keys so they actually uh, work as function keys? Oh, it's just the key. Okay. Yeah, so uh, they yeah, so it works like a, a number pad key, but same thing with my uh, you know I have here, it's also just a number pad. It's not a programmable keypad, but however, on Mac or Linux or Windows, you can program them so they you know they they function as key markers, which is what I do. Um, oh, okay, so yeah, number pad, uh, yeah. Uh, okay, so I think that's it for today. Thank you guys for coming. Um, yeah, so that's that's it. That's it. Uh, we we talked a lot of topic. I, actually, let me take one minute to summarize. We talk what we talked about. We talk about music, classical music, romantic music, Bach and Liszt, uh, and uh, then we talked about. Let's see. Yeah, least how least uh, music is uh, old, uh, is merciless and gloom. Uh, then we talk about dance music, dance frenzy, brainless dance music, uh, electro house, and cute chicks and electro dance music. This I recommend MPIA three. Then we talk about Miami hotlines. Uh, hotline Miami, Hotline Miami OST. This is great dance music. Then we talk about um, let's see, uh, Reddit. So Kasa Reddit, it's my like Kasa. You know, you can uh, Kasa Lee fan club. You can uh, <laughs> hey Daniel. So you can post comments there. And uh, so keyboard layout, Chinese input. Chinese input in Emacs, Emacs command statistics, uh, Vorak keyboard, uh, Kinesis keyboard, a vision layout. Yeah, okay, so thank you guys. Bye.